cheese and chocolate. I might try tea. Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Eden and I'm so excited for today's video. This video is going to be a sample unboxing video. This video is a set of seven tips for people who are wanting to learn how to take care of textured hair or are trying to transition to the curly girl method, which is essentially the same thing. I have been doing the curly girl method loosely since my junior year of high school. It's been about three years now. It has been a really great thing for me and my hair. I have 2B to 2C waves. I don't have Shirley Temple ringlets, which is why for a long time I didn't realize I had curly hair. Turns out I do, and these seven steps have really helped me learn how to, to work with it rather than fighting against it. So, let's get into it. So my very first tip for you guys is actually a bonus tip. It doesn't count as part of the seven, but it's my three don'ts. Don't use sulfates, don't use silicones, and don't use heat. Sulfates, silicones, and heat are things that people who have already transitioned their hair and it's already healthy, these are things that they can use and can choose to use. I occasionally do use sulfates and silicones and heat. But while you're trying to transition your hair, what you're doing is you're trying to cure it from all the damage that it has been dealt by sulfates, silicones, and heat. It can be super tempting because people often experience a phase of just bleh looking hair. It tends to last from like three to six months while you are transitioning. People deal with a lot of frizz, a lot of just limp looking hair. It gets greasy fast and it just doesn't work for them at all. And that's okay, all right? It's because your hair is recovering. Honestly, I went through the transition as like, okay, this is my penance for punishing my hair so long for not being what I dreamed and wanted it to be. So yeah, your hair deserves those three to six months to just get its act together and get used to a new way of care. So during this time, do not fall to the temptation of using heat. That's the big one. It is so easy to be like, oh, but this day, this thing is special. I have an interview or whatever. Don't do it. No. Put the flat iron away. Tuck away the curling iron. Figure out some hairstyles to do. Figure out how to do buns or braids or whatever floats your boat. Make sure that you have an arsenal of hairstyles in your toolbox so that when the temptation arises to use heat, you can say, nope. I'm going to pull it into a beautiful braided bun or I'm going to do this or that. And at the end of this video, I'm actually going to share one of my favorite hairstyles that is super quick, super easy, and I can do pretty much any day just to make sure my hair looks snatched. Cheesebreaker. Alrighty guys, tip number one is to shampoo the top of your head and condition the ends of your hair. This might be common sense to you, and if it is, skip a few seconds ahead, but I just wanted to get that out of the way. Do not be shampooing the ends of your hair that will dry them out. Just shampoo your scalp, that's the part that needs to get clean. And then when you're applying your conditioner, only condition from the top of your ear and down. <sighs> How do I say that? Your scalp naturally conditions itself, so it doesn't need any conditioner. So just condition from your ear down. That is the length of your hair that does not get enough nutrients, so stick with that. My second tip for you guys is to deep condition, especially, especially during your transition period, you need to be deep conditioning. You can deep condition in a lot of ways, I prefer to deep condition at least once a week. I just put a little bit in my hair, I brush it through, and I let it sit for three minutes max. Now when you're transitioning, you might want to let it sit for more like five, six, seven, ten minutes, depending on your hair type and how your hair reacts to your specific deep conditioner. But regardless of how you do it, make sure you are deep conditioning. Tip number three is get a good brush. It might sound crazy to go splurge on a brush, but that's not what I'm asking you to do. There are plenty of good brushes that work really well for textured hair for under $10. This one is the wet brush and holy cow guys, it's awesome. This is perfect for when I'm trying to distribute my conditioner or my leave-in product 
and it doesn't break my hair. The bristles are super bendy, so before it is going to break my hair, it would bend and move out of the way. You definitely have to use this with a conditioning product that has a lot of slip. It really makes a difference when you're using a gentle brush that's not going to break your hair and cause all of this damage to your hair because your hair is at its most vulnerable when it's wet in the shower. And when you have textured hair, you should only be brushing your hair when it's wet and in the shower. So get a good brush, invest in a good one. Like I said, this is the wet brush, but I've also heard a lot of really good things about the Tangle Teaser. And you can always opt for a like $1 wide tooth comb if you're on a budget. Tip number four is very important. You see this? It's called a towel. And you see all these things? They're called fibers and they are not good for your hair. Get that out of here. Oh my gosh. My point is don't use a towel on your hair. Don't get out of the shower and tousle your hair with it. Haha, <laughs> towel. So. Only use the towel on your body, keep it away from your hair. The fibers are really big and they will cause a lot of friction and breakage on the ends of your hair. So don't do it. Instead, use a t-shirt. We all have some of these, just those basic cotton t-shirts, the kind that they give away for free. Use a t-shirt to get the water out of your hair if that's what you want, or I like to use it to scrunch my hair and then I plop my hair with it. If you're wanting to know what plopping is, let me know in the comments section down below. I'd like to make a video about it, so let me know if that's something that you would be interested in. My fifth tip for you guys involves this baby. So this is a satin pillowcase. I've used it for years. You could also get silk ones, those are a little bit more luxurious. But if you have textured hair, you should not be sleeping on a cotton pillowcase. No, no, and no. Cotton pillowcases really dry out your hair and they also create a lot of friction and a lot of like heat as you're sleeping. It creates breakage on the ends of your hair and it's just not a good scenario. I picked this satin pillowcase up years ago at Walmart for like two bucks or something, super cheap, and it really made a difference. If you don't like the feel of a satin pillowcase, you could always opt for a silk or satin scarf or a silk or satin bonnet. Tip number six is to try different products with different techniques. So you can get one product from the drugstore and then get another and then get another and then get another and another and another because they all didn't work for you and soon enough your closet is full of products that just did not work. Don't do that, okay? Get a few products that you think will work for you, ones that have been recommended to you, ones that have good ingredients, and try them out. Once you get a product, be very intentional about using it different ways. This is the Caram 2 Avocado Hydrating Gel. I bought this thinking that I could use it like any other gel. And I did, and it failed, and I did, and it failed, and I did, and it failed. And so I was like, okay, clearly this product doesn't work for me, because I had tried it multiple times. But what I didn't do is try it multiple ways. This product ended up being one of my favorite products ever, but I had to use it while my hair was sopping wet. It's a really good gel. It doesn't really work in my hair if I'm putting it in while my hair is damp. So try different products and try them in different ways before you give up on them. My last tip for you guys, number seven, is to be patient with your hair. You are the one that damaged it, you get to pay for it. Your hair needs this time to recover. It's not going to look good every day and that's okay. Be patient with your hair and learn how to accept it. One of the best ways to do this is to learn how to style your hair without heat or anything in a way that will really make a bad hair day turn good. Alrighty, I'm just a little closer because I want to show you guys one of my favorite hairstyles to do when I'm not having a good hair day. So let me just take down this bun. Okay, so I like to start with just a deep side part here. And okay, I have a mirror behind me, so I'm going to be looking at that. All right, so I just like to start with a little, little section. It's about an inch deep. I just am going to French braid it. So I'm going to split it into three parts, like so, and then cross one into the middle, and then the other into the middle, and then the other into the middle. And at this point, I'm going to start adding in hair. So I'm going to get a little strand of my bang and a little bit of my other longer hair and pull that into the middle with this strand. And then I pull the outside into the middle, grab a little strand, add it in, and then take the outside over here into the middle, 
a little strand and add it in. Alrighty, so at this point, I have pretty much finished my bang section. So I'm just going to braid the rest of this part, and then I'll turn around and show you what I do in the back. Secure the end with a little bobby pin. I'm just going to pull very gently up at the top just to make sure it's loose. If I don't do this, I end up getting little sticky uppy pieces like this one. If you see that so I like to pull my hair apart just a little bit to soften it up alrighty I'm gonna turn around and show you how I do a low bun in the back so at this point I just take my satin scrunchie and go ahead and gather all of my hair up and I pretty much almost pull all of my hair through but then at the very last moment I'm gonna twist my wrist and then pull that loop through so that's just over and over. And then I have this nice little bun and then I'll tuck things as I want them to be tucked. So I'll tuck this guy. I honestly don't know what that looks like from the back, but it feels good. It feels like just the simple, quick hairstyle that I do. I'm just gonna turn here. Hopefully it looks okay. I will often just leave it like this, or sometimes I'll go through and pull out these side pieces because they're gonna come out anyway, and I might as well know what they look like, right? And then that bobby pin on the end of the braid just serves to keep it kind of stuck into the bun. If I don't use a bobby pin on the end of the braid, this little braid part will sometimes pop out or get loose. And so that bobby pin just kind of gives it an anchor to kind of hold itself amongst the rest of my hairs. Alrighty guys, and last but not least, I want to share with you a few of my favorite products. This is a simple, very inexpensive lineup that I think you, if you are starting this journey, you should go out and buy if you're looking for a starter kit. These products are just kind of generic, good, solid products that I think would work for anyone with any kind of hair texture. First up is the Cantu Avocado Hydrating Shampoo and Conditioner. This line is really good and actually in this simple product lineup, I have their hydrating curl activator cream and their gel. And this line is just a great starting line. I really like Shea Moisture and Maui Moisture and I have a ton of products from them and I think they work really well. If you're looking at a few of those products, go for it. But Cantu is on the very inexpensive end of things, which is really nice when you're starting the Curly Girl Method because you're buying lots of things. You're buying a satin pillowcase and you're buying a nice hairbrush and you're buying a bunch of new products and I would really like to just give you this line that's very simple and inexpensive. I would also recommend checking out the Aussie Instant Freeze Gel. It's really good, super cheap. It's like between three and four dollars. It is glycerin free. So if you're in a humid area, I would recommend this over this gel. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. This was a pleasure to film. I've been wanting to film this video for a long time. So thank you so much for sticking around. If you stayed till the very end, comment a monkey emoji in the comment section. You can choose which monkey, whether it's the face or the body or the behind, but comment a monkey. Alrighty guys, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.